I am Dr. Marla Shapiro. I have been president of the North American Menopause Society through 2017, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. And I'm joined today by a fellow member of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Gloria Richard Davis. So, firstly, give us that long title of what you do. So, I'm actually the director for reproductive endocrinology and infertility for University of Arkansas Medical Science in Little Rock. I also serve as our medical director for our PA program. So, there's a new product on the market that clinicians are looking at mm -hmm. called DHEA, or prasterone. Mm -hmm. Tell us what this is. So, prasterone is, uh, is an endogenous uh, hormone. It's non-active. In terms of this product, it's 6.5 milligrams of prasterone. Mm -hmm. It is um, a steroid, but it's non-estrogen-based and it gets converted to estrogen and testosterone in the body. So when that conversion happens, what about blood levels of testosterone or estrogen? So the blood levels in the clinical trials were very low. Uh, they looked at seven days after continuous daily use. And what they found is that the levels of prosterone was very low, so was estradiol and testosterone. So serum levels remain low. So who's a candidate for this, uh, this, this use of, of DHEA? So the, the ideal candidate would be any woman, really, who is, who is experiencing moderate to severe pain with intercourse due to menopause, due to the vaginal and vulvar changes that we see in menopause. The nice thing about this product is it is FDA approved. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is non-estrogen based, so it doesn't have the block, black box warning that other products have. And so for patients who have this prescription, the pharmacist doesn't uh, highlight basically the black box when they pick it up. So less likely that they will have any sort of objections to using it. So talk about the dosing and potential side effects. So the dosing, it's a daily dosing, it's 6.5 milligrams that you uh, place a vaginal insert. Uh, some of the side effects that were seen was uh, increase in vaginal discharge, which of course when you think about physiologically what happens with regards to uh, vaginal tissue and pH during menopause because of estrogen deficiency, what we typically see is um, very thin mucosa with low numbers of superficial cells. And the superficial cells indicates a healthy mucosa. So what we see in uh, the daily use of uh, prostome is that we start to convert back to a healthy profile. So we see an increase in superficial cells, we see a decrease in vaginal pH back towards a healthy. And so as a result of that, you will see some increase in vaginal discharge. So the patient should expect that. So who is a candidate who is not a candidate? Who should not be taking this? Well, there, there really is no uh, contraindication to it, with the exception of things like what we know. Um, anyone who has undiagnosed or abnormal bleeding, right. uh, anyone who has uh, pre-existing cancers, uh, because you want to make sure that when you start the preparation that you're starting with a healthy postmenopausal patient. So in the world of options, this is a new option mm -hmm. for us, how can you advise physicians in terms of individualizing that treatment to counsel who might best be using a low-dose vaginal estrogen ovule or a ring or a cream and now this new option? Yeah. Well, you know, for new patients, I think it's an option you can offer just right off the bat. Uh, for patients who are perhaps not happy or not satisfied, sometimes patients who are using um, vaginal creams don't like it because there is, uh, they say there's uh, mess or discharge related to it. So those may be patients that you would consider uh, switching to prostorum. And the you know, inevitable question that we get asked with a daily insert is, is that how will it affect my partner? When should I be inserting it or not inserting it? Is this a risk to my partner? Well, first of all, there's no risk to the partner. Um, you insert it uh, nightly, and there's no reason to not engage in intercourse with it. A welcome addition, do you think? I think it's a great addition. 
you know, I think just the fact that it is FDA approved, we've been um, recommending DHEA for a number of reasons with regards to menopausal patients, but now we have an FDA approved product. It's a non-estrogen based product, which is huge because we have some patients who are estrogen phobic. And so this provides an option for those patients that otherwise didn't exist. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me.